Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. This video is a masterclass in transplanting your seedlings out into their final growing positions. And I'm just gonna show you the no nonsense methods that I follow. The big question is what point do we transplant our seedlings? How big do they need to be? The simple answer is as long as they've got a couple of true leaves like these spinach have, you can put them outside. Now for me, I tend to uh, usually let things grow on so they're a bit bigger. For example, these Swiss chard. The reason why um, is because they've got a stronger root ball um, and also because if I have an issue such as slugs coming um, and attacking these, it means that I will notice slug damage and I can make the necessary um, changes uh, to prevent it. But if slugs come and attack one of these, chances are they'll decimate uh, my seedlings and I'm back to square one. An important consideration you've got to make when transplanting is understanding the hardiness of the crops that you're growing. At the moment, at this time of year, we're still getting frost. So I know that I can only really transplant my hardy uh, seedlings, for example, uh, these sweet peas. When it comes to things like tomatoes, I've got to make sure because they're tender that they're protected um, and that I transplant these at least two weeks after the last frost date. There'll be a link down below in the video description for you to find out what your average last frost date so you can better plan when to transplant your seedlings. Knowing when your last average frost date is a great help for you to plan out when to transplant seedlings. But quite a hotly debated topic is that idea of hardening off plants. So hardening off is the idea of taking out your seedlings um, outside for a period of four to five days, but then bringing them in at night so they can kind of acclimatize. With hardy plants, I don't bother. I don't see the point of it. All of these uh, seedlings here, um, these I've got uh, radish. This is actually gonna be um, my salad bed. I've got chicory, lettuce, spinach, uh, dill coming through, uh, onions. All of these are hardy plants. I didn't harden them off even though they grew under cover in quite a warm environment. It's not necessary. When you have things though that are tender plants that are going outside, for example, squash, you might want to bring them out for a day or two. But again, I never bother and consistently year on year, it doesn't seem to have an impact. Yes, your squash plants might look at you for a week thinking, what have you done to me? Um, but they will start growing. After a week, you'll see new growth coming. They'll actually be focusing their energy on creating the new roots under the soil anyway. Um, and I think it's one of the easiest ways uh, to reduce overcomplication and increase your efficiency as a gardener um, by kind of not bothering about hardening off. That's what I do and it works a dream. I've got some Monge 2 here, which are ready to be transplanted. Now, when it comes to transplanting seedlings, the time of day really doesn't matter. What does matter is that they have plenty of water. So at least 20 minutes before I transplant something, I will put it in a tray of water with about at least an inch or two and a half centimeters of water uh, at the base. So it can really, the roots can really soak it up so they've got plenty of water um, ready for transplanting. It's crucial that we really look after seedlings because how they perform now and how you transplant them will have an impact on their harvest. So one thing you can do is you can make something like a fermented plant juice, which is a natural broad spectrum mineral amendment that you can put a few drops uh, into this water um, to provide the plants with any minerals that they might actually be missing, just so they can have a bit of a head start when you transplant them. And there's a video up here showing you in more detail how exactly to do this. The great thing about transplanting, unlike sowing direct, for example, is that bed preparation or the preparation of the ground that you're going to transplant in is very minimal. You don't need to make a nice tilth. All you need to do is give it a quick weed and it is ready for you to start putting in some of your plants. It's as simple as that. Now, if it's really dry, you might want to give it a really good soaking the day before, um, but that is up to you because there's always an opportunity uh, to water the ground after transplanting as well. If you're going to be transplanting a bulk load of one particular crop, for example, this is the onion bed, there's a couple of things you should bear in mind. The first is if you want a really easy way to weed is to make sure that you uh, leave enough space for a hoe to pass through. 
which means I can easily go along and get this bed weeded. If I grew them too close uh, to one another, I'm then gonna have to go in and use my hands. So that's quite a, a nice time-saving tip. Another thing to do if you're transplanting a load of a single crop is to plant them on a diagonal offset rather than in straight lines leading up. Uh, you can actually see in the B-roll that these are actually um, diagonal um, in comparison to the size of the bed. What that planting method actually does is it lets you fit in more plants in the same space in comparison to traditional block planting. And what's not to complain about the idea of being able to fit in more plants in the same space. In this space here, I'm going to be transplanting these Swiss chard seedlings and to help me if I'm wanting to create straight rows I use this stick and string method. I made it so it's as wide as the widest raised bed here in the garden and you simply uh, tie a bit of string to two sticks and then uh, you place them down like that and then you've got an instant straight line. So if you're trying to fit in as many things as possible, this is a great way of doing it. So I've got that um, as my guide. The next thing to do uh, is to think about the transplanting holes. There are three ways of doing it. The first is if you have very light soil, you can just use your fingers um, and make a hole like that. The other thing uh, you can do um, is to use some kind of dibber. So most of the transplanting I do uh, is with this. I'll just make a hole in the ground like that and put in the seedling. And then the other one um, is like uh, for the charlots because they're a much bigger plant, I'll use something like a trowel just to move it out of the way. Now a top tip is if you're creating a transplanting hole, um, so I'll, I'll do one uh, here for example with the Swiss chard, you want to actually make it deeper uh, than the root ball. So this is a root ball, okay? And I want this hole to be deeper. So the plant is sitting slightly underneath. And the reason why is it actually creates, uh, you can see it's just below the level there, it creates this kind of bowl shape. So when I do the first water, it's going to capture all of the water. Now I'll just take this out just for the time being because there's another thing you can do um, to make it even more successful. Make a hole uh, that's even deeper. I'll just remove uh, this compost um, and soil here, and then use some really good uh, fresh compost just to provide a bit of fertility. So sprinkle that in at the base, and then what you do is you get some water, because remember, as I said earlier on, water is absolutely uh, vital and really important. And you want to give this a really generous soaking. So as the roots grow down, you know that there's gonna be um, a really nice amount of water for them there. So once that um, water settles down, as you can see, that's what it's doing. I'm then going to get uh, the seedling and pop it in. And then I'll use the soil just to kind of push it in like that, but make sure that there is a little bit of a bowl shape so it's naturally going to collect the water. Now I'm just going to um, continue doing this. What I'm going to do so I have the diagonal is to have four plants here, three on the next row and then another four. So I'll just kind of start from one end and then I'll work out what the rough half is like that and that's where I'm going to be placing uh, the first row of seedlings. So these are all transplanted. Just a quick tip is to actually always grow more seedlings than you need. So you can see I've got a spare seedling here. So it means should anything happen and you have a clump of seedlings fail, you've got some security. And here's a couple of other examples. Um, I've got some of these uh, onions left over. So if I have an onion that needs replacing, I've got some backup. Uh, and then I've also um, got some peas here as well. Now after two or three weeks, I will probably end up placing these um, in some other place, kind of create a bed that's dedicated for odds and ends. But that's just a nice kind of security policy to always have a few extra seedlings just in case something needs replacing. So these are all transplanted now. And the final thing is to give these 
a uh, really good soaking. So as you know, as much water as possible, just to really welcome them in to their new home. So that's a really simple process of transplanting that I follow. And I always think that there's um, a lot of benefit in just taking a little bit more time and making sure that you do it uh, to the best of your abilities in the time that you have. And the number one takeaway is to make sure that there's plenty of water provided for the seedlings. If you'd like to get some behind the scenes about how I garden and what is happening currently um, in this garden and for some extra tips, videos, content, etc., um, please check out my Patreon. And I look forward to seeing you guys again soon next week where we'll be talking about direct sowing.